this Martin Lapinoff alternative heating solutions. And the uh, subject of cleaning the damper plate come up in a group the other day. And the strange part is about the dampers on these, it's totally environmental, or it seems to be. On my old one, smoke would come out the stack, go up a few foot, drop to the ground, follow the hill down, cross the driveway, and might eventually cross the road. That is called a temperature inversion. If you've seen your smoke from a campfire or the steam from your G-Series do that, you have a temperature inversion. And if your area of the stove at is prone to those, the damper seems to stick more for whatever reason. When I first installed this one in 2017, it had the original air box, which is this one, square cut, quarter inch plate on the face. And I was cleaning that weekly. Just plain plan on every Sunday, pop the damper motor off, hit it for wire brush, get it all shiny, put a little transmission oil on it, reassemble it. Which, if you do it enough, it's not even a five minute job. I had less time in doing that than I would have to clean the stack in my old conventional so the creosote didn't plug the elbow up. This is the second generation air box. You can see it's formed and the flat plate's actually in the back. I went to this one and this has been running since the middle of October and I've not cleaned it yet. You can see though it is starting to get a little creosote back there. And there's two ways you can do it. You can just uh, like stick your pocket knife behind it right away put a little ATF and let it go or you can pop it off and clean it here I've removed a quarter inch bolt from each hole do not loosen this one which clamps the shaft if you have I'll show you the proper way to reassemble it after I'm done cleaning it you just simply lift the damper out and you can see if you bought it from me it'll be marked Then I take the absolute finest wire brush you can find and I clamp it in a cordless drill. Hmm, yeah, still on hammer. There, now I bet it'll be quieter. But you just wanna get all the black off you can. Now, when you go to reinstall that damper motor, there is a hole in that box. That one right there to be exact. You need to line the shaft up so it drops in, you'll fill it. Then you put your two bolts in. If you don't line it up, you put the bolts in, crank it down, you will bind it up and it will not turn. And if you have taken this plate off, it does matter which way it's on. This is going to turn clockwise. My arrow is going to be over here when it's all the way open. You want the smallest part of the slot to start to uncover the holes in the air box. If you have it on backwards and the fat part starts uncovering the slot first, it's going to affect the operation of the stove little while they did have as well the slots were different sizes on a G100 you got a tiny little slot here and it'll be a quarter inch hole that always goes to the bottom when it opens the other ones if you're not quite sure the easiest thing to do set this on a piece of paper trace the slot with a pencil Rotate 180 and see if the other slot matches. If they match, it doesn't matter as long as it's on the right direction. Now, if you loosen that center bolt, now your plate can just spin. 
easiest way to do this. Bring it back. Like I said, I marked mine. You'll have to play with yours. But do not tighten it down yet. Make sure the slots or the shaft is in the hole. And the easiest way to tell is try to wiggle it up and down. If you can't go up and down, it's in the hole. Then I go finger tight. And what I do, I don't know if I can do this one handed. But I grab the motor, and you can see it move a little bit. You see the shaft just come out like a sixteenth of an inch. And then I tighten it there. If you tighten it down with the shaft bottomed out in the bottom of the hole, I've had one or two that would turn so far then they'd bind up because they're jammed against the bottom of the hole. I'd loosen them up and they'd take right off and work. Once you figure out where you want it, what I do is I take my paint marker and I use this as a guide to draw my arrow. That way they're parallel. You can tell you're in the right spot. Then you just click it on and watch the disc. End of its rotation. You see there, it's like 3 sixteenths of an inch shy of being fully open. If your stove's not maxed out for a square foot, that's probably good enough. If you're right up to need every bit you have, go ahead and adjust it so it's wide open. What I'll do is use this 10 millimeter bolt again. I put needle nose right on the shaft. Turn it. And again, yeah, I can't do this one hand. But flex the damper motor a little, then tighten the shaft so you don't have the shaft bottomed out in the hole. After I get it adjusted for full open, I power it off, let it shut, make sure it's closing correctly. But yep, everything's closed off, and I'll go ahead and power it back up and watch it one more time. And once you get this to where you like it, that's when you put the arrow on. Gives you a good starting point. Now, if you're having constant issues with your plate sticking and you got the older style box, talk to your dealer so you can get an upgrade. The newest boxes do seem to have solved the issue. Like I said, it is environmental. I've had guys do everything wrong you could possibly do wrong and never have that plate stick. Ever. Then I had other guys that were almost doing it better than I am and they'd still have problems with the plate sticking. The upgrade usually solved it. This one Martin Lapp with alternative heating solutions. The women don't find you handsome, at least they can find you handy. And I'm back. A little addendum. Uh, one of my videos, somebody mentioned they want to see my stove after it's a couple years old. It won't be so clean. Well, this is a 2017. I did put the newer door on last winter, which puts my confused them a little. But this stove does have a manufacturer date of January 2017, and I had it running in the service before the paint was even cured. A uh, little purple power from Dollar General goes a long ways. Four bucks a bottle. The only thing it might not, it does dull the paint a little bit, but not near as bad as having it covered in creosote. If you want to, after you use it, you can always wax it back up and make it shiny. Which, on the other, which, by the way, if you have time and the weather permits before you fire yours up for the first time, a good coat of turtle wax on the front it helps things clean up a lot better too. This is Martin Lappin of Alternative Heating Solutions. Women don't find you handsome, at least they can find you handy.